Father, we thank you that we are not abandoned, we are not forgotten by you, but you actually call us your friend. We thank you for that privilege and our song says this. When mine, you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call. are thinking of me, how you love me. It's amazing, say who am I, say who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me.
Sanctuary family, and welcome to our online service. We're so glad that you guys are here, ready to worship with us today. But before we move on any further, I specifically want to welcome our first-time visitors. If this is your first time at Sanctuary, we're so glad that you're here. And of course, we want to continuously get to know you. So what you can do is you can go ahead and click the link in the comments. That'll take you to our welcome form. We just want to know a little bit more about you. And also, we want you to take advantage of this opportunity for all our first-time guests. At the bottom of that form, you'll see a couple Northside organizations that we've been partnering with for a while now. We want you to go ahead and click one of those, and we would love to give a donation on your behalf. So please go ahead and follow that form. We would love to know you a little bit more. Also, for the rest of our members and those of you who have been hanging around for a little bit while longer, we're always excited that you guys are here. Now, whether you're new or whether you've been here for a while, this is a special Sunday. And the reason is, I don't know if anyone's told you, I don't know if you guys know it or anything yet, but today is the 18th anniversary of Sanctuary Covenant Church. So yes, it is a huge day of celebration. We're finally like, you know, adults now, kind of, and we're so excited to be able to celebrate that with you. So if you have an old photo of old Sanctuary memories, if you have a favorite memory that you wanna type in the chat, please share that with us. We would love to reminisce with you. So any photos, any memories, if you wanna tag anyone to get here and upload their photos in the comments as well, we just wanna celebrate because it's such an incredible time. So stay tuned for ways that we'll continuously reflect on how good God has been to us at Sanctuary Covenant Church in North Minneapolis as a whole. So again, welcome. We're so excited to be here. Now, throughout the rest of our service, if you have any prayer requests at all, we want you to know that we would love to be praying for you. Now, whether that's right now in the comments or throughout the week, you can always send us prayer requests and we will always be lifting you up in prayer. So if you do have a prayer request that you're comfortable sharing with us, go ahead and send that to prayers at sanctuarycov.org. Now, at this time in our service, I want you guys to pull out your Bible, whether you use it on um, a physical copy or your phone like me, but whatever you have, go ahead and um, open it up and open to Luke 10. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 2. So Luke 10, 1 through 2 says this. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Sanctuary, let's pray. God, what an incredible moment that we get to share today. Lord, to look back on the the ways that you've used us, the ways that you've strengthened us. God, the ways that you've given us wisdom and matured us over the years. Lord, we are so grateful. And no matter where we are in this journey with sanctuary, Lord, whether we've been here for a couple months or a few years, Lord, um, I just am so confident in the ways that you have shown up in our lives. And so I pray that you would give us the grace to enjoy this day. Give us the grace to be able to celebrate, to um, just experience the joy and the things that you've done here. God, I just ask that our hearts would be right before you. Lord God, that we would be able to um, just... It, experience um, all the ways that your Holy Spirit is wanting to impress upon our lives today. God, let us be attentive to your Holy Spirit. Let us walk with you day by day. God, bless the rest of this service, Lord Jesus, and we thank you and we're in expectation for what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, good morning, Sanctuary family, and thank you so much for joining us for this week's worship service. Um, As we today celebrate 18 years of the Sanctuary Covenant Church, um, I thought it would be an awesome opportunity for us to, as we celebrate, to invite back two men who have been incredible blessings to our church and who know the sanctuary in ways that most people will never know the sanctuary. I'm talking specifically about our founding pastor, Dr. Ephraim Smith, and our second pastor, our immediate past pastor, uh, Dr. Dennis Edwards. Um, you know them, you love them, and you know how much they love this church. And so, Pastor Ephraim, Pastor Dennis, thank you both for making some space to be with us today. Um, how, how would you encourage the people uh, as we celebrate this 18th anniversary, and, and what has Sanctuary meant to you and your growth? Wow, well, Sanctuary has meant so much to me because 
um, I was there from the beginning, honored to be with the original 20 to 25 folks that sensed a call to plant a, an intentionally multi-ethnic reconciling church in North Minneapolis. Um, and it, it, was, it was special for me uh, because it was my first opportunity to be a senior pastor, to be a lead pastor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so for, um, uh, so for folks to entrust, uh, me and, and my wife, Danisha, uh, to, um, to go with us to launch this church and what it's become. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's meant a lot to me because, uh, it allowed me to grow and, and develop further as a pastor and get greater clarity of my calling yeah. uh, of um, how God has wired me for ministry mm -hmm. and, and to, um, and to, to serve in the development of other churches like uh, sanctuary across the country. Uh, the second thing that's, that's been uh, so meaningful to me is that sanctuary has lived beyond my tenure there. That wow. sanctuary um, in the unfortunate death of George Floyd and the aftermath uh, uh, sanctuary covenant church to be a hub of, of care, a hub of unleashing compassion, a hub of meeting needs uh, in, in the midst of unrest and brokenness. Um, that, that just warms my heart because it, it lets me know that Sanctuary Covenant Church was much bigger than me, that this is God's mm -hmm. uh, and God's hand is still on it. And even when, when, um, when Dennis Edwards came after me and served uh, it, and, and the building uh, campaign launched and, and the building was constructed, mm -hmm. I was just grateful for the leadership of Dennis Edwards to make sure that again, beyond me, beyond mm -hmm. any individual, there was a permanent marker of mm -hmm. the mission of Sanctuary Covenant Church in North Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And then for you to now take the helm, Edrin, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, yeah. Somebody, uh, I, I believe, uh, I wouldn't say much younger, but younger <laughs> than much me. Much younger, much younger. <laughs> me and Dennis Edwards. So. I'm, I'm grateful that beyond me, Dennis Edwards came and, and laid a landmark for sanctuary. And yeah. you have come to, sig to signify uh, the, the ongoing next generation Amen. Amen. Uh, mission and presence of sanctuary. So I'm just extremely grateful. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Ephraim. I appreciate that. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Dennis. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, it's good to see you both. And, uh, and, yeah. and Dr. Smith, Pastor Ephraim, that was, that's, it's amazing. I, I too um, marvel at what God has done in the sanctuary that is bigger than all of us. And uh, I'm grateful to you, Pastor Ephraim, for the vision that you had to see this work grow and develop. And, and, and that you could believe because church planters do this. They have to see something that doesn't yet exist. And, and you did that. And, uh, and by God's grace, it's still going on. And, uh, and, and, and so you say it was your first time to be a senior pastor. And it was actually my last time to be a senior <laughs> pastor as I tra transitioned to an to a educational role. I, I thought, well, you know, the sanctuary is doing the kinds of stuff I had dreamed about in my previous ministries, the kind of work in the city, the kind of work in a multi-ethnic environment that was intentionally cross-cultural and multiracial. I mean, these were things I tried to do in my life earlier and, and saw the sanctuary as doing that. So I was honored to be part of that work uh, for the few years that I was there and grateful to God that we could um, put that landmark, as you say, to mark a territory of, uh, and be a light in that community. And I too watched what happened after George Floyd was murdered and saw how the sanctuary just continued to be a presence. Hey, when I came to the sanctuary, it was just a year after the tornado hit North Minneapolis. And I also heard stories about the sanctuary rising to that occasion. So it's been a uh, grace of God for me to be part of that. Um, for to kind of end my pastoral tenure in ministry. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. You, you both have, have been um, critical parts of 
sanctuary story over these first 18 years. Um, and, and we could literally spend all day just thanking both of you for what you've done, um, the example you've set for the sacrifices you've made. Um, there are many days where I, I am challenged by something and I know, I, I find comfort in knowing there are at least two other people in this world who, <laughs> who know what I'm experiencing right now. And so thank you for, for making some space to, to be with us to celebrate on this 18th anniversary, um, the 18th of, of what I hope will be hundreds and hundreds to come. But I want to, as we wrap up, just just ask us to wrap up our time in prayer and ask both of you, if you would just say a word of blessing over this church mm -hmm. as we continue forward um, in, in what God has for us. And so Pastor Ephraim, I'll ask you to start and then Pastor Dennis, if you will wrap our time up with prayer. Sure, would be honored. Dear gracious God, um, thank you for 18 years. Um, unfortunately, there are some church plants that don't make it uh, past three years mm -hmm. they, they don't make it to year five uh because there there are um significant challenges mm -hmm. um there, there's there's spiritual warfare in planting a church mm -hmm. that yes. is committed to advancing your kingdom lord but is is committed to being a sneak preview mm -hmm. of that kingdom thank right you. now and so god I'm, I'm so grateful god thank you for uh, 18 years, uh, sanctuary is grown now. Uh, so 18, so God, we're, we're grateful. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your protection. And, and thank you, uh, God, that, um, you, you gave us, um, the, the, the privilege and the honor of serving your work in this way. Um, and, and God, we, we thank you, uh, for what you will do in the future uh, with the testimony of what you've already done. Yes. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I join in prayer with my brothers here and thank you for the way your spirit's been at work at the sanctuary. Lo, these 18 years, we are grateful. And as Pastor Ephraim said, a lot of churches don't make it that far. And we are grateful for the work that you have done and been faithful over the years. Lord, I pray that you would continue to raise up people who are committed, oh, well, who hunger and thirst for justice, who are hungry to know you, to know your word, to live it out uh, wherever they are, uh, among whomever they are with. So I pray, Lord God, for that genuine appetite to continue to, to grow and that many more would uh, be hungry for you, for your word and for righteousness. We pray with thanksgiving. We pray with expectation. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you both for um, being with us and, and for shepherding us in these first 18 years. And I look forward for the ways God will still continue to use you both to bless thank the sanctuary you. in the years mm -hmm. to come. So thank, thank you. you so much to both of you. Yeah, thank you. you. Next, next time I'll have a bookcase behind me too. Y'all look so smart <laughs> in your background. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and oh. 
sanctuary, we want to invite you to continue on in our worship service today as we lift up our offering. We would love to have you join with us today. And here at Sanctuary, there's four ways to give. The first way you can give is by mail. You can also give by text. You can give through our Church Center app. And then the last way you can give is our website at sanctuarycove.org. And we would love for you to join in with what God is doing in the life of our church, but in our community as well. So let's pray for the offering together. Lord God, we lift up this gift to you. God, but more than anything, we lift up our eyes to you. We lift up our hearts to you. God, I ask that if there's any distractions, Lord God, that are trying to get in the way of the word today, Lord, I pray that you would just remove those, God, that we would be hyper-focused on you. God, I just ask that you would um, just give us a word today that we can take with us, Lord, something that we can be constantly remembering throughout the week. God, give us something where we can say, I know my God is good. God, give us the grace to be able to celebrate this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for your family. Aren't you so glad that we can go to the Father? And he calls us friend because he actually knows us by name. Scripture says that he knows the number of hairs on our heads. No matter where you are in your journey today, no matter what season of life you find yourself in, you are not alone. so glad today that he knows your name and he knows my name.
Hey there, Sanctuary family. Thank you all so much for being with us today. My name is Edrin, lead pastor here at the Sanctuary, and I just want to take this moment to thank all of you for allowing us to be a part of your week. Uh, We are excited today to jump into God's Word together, but just before we do, I want to take a moment and update you on a special offering that we took a few weeks ago to bless several other churches in our community. As you recall, at our Christmas Eve service, we uh, invited you to give above and beyond your regular giving so that we might uh, surprise three other churches here in North Minneapolis with a special offering. Um, That offering that night yielded just under $10,000. And so I'm happy to say that this week I was able to deliver three checks for about $3,200 to three smaller churches here in North Minneapolis as a blessing from the Sanctuary Covenant Church. Uh, My hope is that those dollars, God would multiply them and use them in an incredible way. But the gesture really was to show that Sanctuary is a part of a larger work that God is doing in our community. We are not the only faithful church in this community, and we want it to be a blessing to some others. So thank you all who gave and gave generously during our Christmas Eve service uh, to allow us to be a blessing to several other churches here in North Minneapolis. Today we're going to jump into um, a, a special message, one in because it is our anniversary here at the sanctuary. 18 years ago, God blessed the sanctuary to come into being. Um, But it's also the Sunday that we will also lay out our theme for this year. So I want to invite you again, if you have your Bibles, to turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, we want to look at verses 1 and 2 as we jump into today's message. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Here's what God's Word says. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, 
to send out workers into his harvest field. Let's take a moment and pray. Lord God, thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for the ways in which you have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you, Lord, that you love us in such a way that you allow us to be not just uh, affiliated with you, but you have called us your sons and daughters. Thank you that we have been redeemed, Lord. Thank you that we have been made free by the blood of Jesus. And now, Lord, as we uh, embark on this new year together, I pray that you would bless us. And Lord, I thank you for what you've done here in the history of the Sanctuary Covenant Church. And Lord, I look with expectation to what you will do in the weeks, months, and years ahead. So be with us now as we look at your word and testify to what you've done over these first 18 years. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. And we say together, amen. As we begin today and uh, just look back a bit on these first 18 years of ministry, I want to go first to the year 2003. The year 2003. I was a senior at the University of South Carolina, far, far, far away from here. In fact, about 2,000 plus miles away. And I didn't know much about Minneapolis and St. Paul outside of Randy Moss and Kirby Puckett and Kevin Garnett, Prince, and the cold weather. In fact, when I, when I think back about uh, Minnesota in, in my mind at that point, I, I thought about Minnesota sort of in the same way one might think about the North Pole. It's a cold place. It's far, far away. Had no intention of ever going there. And you're told as kids that there are some really cool folks who hang out there. That's about what I knew of and thought about Minnesota. But while I was there in South Carolina preparing for graduation, God was here in Minnesota doing something incredible. God was bringing together an incredible group of people here in the city of Minneapolis in the Twin Cities area to launch an incredible ministry called the Sanctuary Covenant Church. The founding pastor at the sanctuary, as you know by now, is a young pastor named Ephraim Smith. It was his first time serving as a senior pastor, and while, most certainly, while he most certainly didn't do all the work on his own, Pastor Ephraim was certainly the right person to receive the vision and get the sanctuary started. You see, the sanctuary was founded to be something other than just another church, it was founded to be an urban church. It was founded to be uh, culturally connected to city life in all of its complexity, all of its diversity, and all of its energy. It was to be an urban church, a city church. And even though it was a city church, those who did not live in the city have always been welcome and invited to be a part of what God is doing here at Sanctuary. It was called to be a multiplying church. That word multiplying, as we use it here at the sanctuary, represents a church that is committed to fulfilling the great commission that we find in Matthew 28. We want it to be, from the very beginning, a church that was committed to making disciples of all different kinds of people. That's who sanctuary was. Urban, it was multiplying, it was also a reconciling church. That's what sanctuary was intended to be from day one. It was a church committed to breaking down those barriers that were built up because of race and class and gender and any other factor that would, would come between us and, and prevent us from building meaningful relationships. It, it was committed not just to breaking down those barriers, but it was for the sake of intentionally building relationships across those differences. A while later, Scott McKnight, Dr. Scott McKnight from Northern Seminary would would make a name for churches like that. He would call it a fellowship of difference. That's what sanctuary was called to be, a reconciling church, a fellowship of many different kinds of people called together. Not only was it an urban church, a multiplying church, a reconciling church, the sanctuary was from day one intended to be a North Minneapolis church. 
because of the unique challenges and opportunities and potential of this community, because Pastor Ephraim himself was raised in this community. From day one, Sanctuary has been committed to basing our ministry here, basing our outreach here, and giving this community priority when it comes to how we use our resources. We don't simply want to be a church in North Minneapolis. We have always been committed to being a North Minneapolis church. In talking about this and some of our finding, founding documents, Pastor Ephraim offers several stats that speak to the disproportionate suffering of African Americans here in the Twin Cities. And then he goes on to say that these stats are the reason that even though Sanctuary will be a multi-ethnic church, there will be a priority around issues of the Christ-centered and holistic empowerment of African Americans. He goes on to say there will be no apologies for this, and though all people are welcome at the sanctuary, until the statistics change, and we know today that they have not, he says to serve the least of these in North Minneapolis means a comprehensive and proactive strategy for ministry to the African American community. He goes on to say, I also believe, though, that this can be done without ignoring the needs of other ethnic communities of the city. And then he ends by saying the sanctuary will be a Christ-centered, multi-ethnic, holistic, and transforming church with a proactive agenda for the empowerment of the African-American community. Friends, sanctuary was never intended just to be another church, just to be another church on another corner in the community. In describing this new local church that was intended to be fresh. Pastor Ephraim wrote these words, I believe there is a need for an urban, multi-ethnic, and holistic Christian community dedicated to transform lives, discipleship, and community development. There is a need in the city of Minneapolis, he says, for a new work that would take the risk of being a sneak preview of heaven. Sanctuary was always supposed to change the face of the church, to present a new experience of what church was. Because God ordained the sanctuary, God blessed the sanctuary, this church grew quickly, becoming one of the fastest growing and most attractive churches in the Twin Cities in its early years. God was doing an incredible work through this church. In fact, the sanctuary outgrew its systems very early. I, I was, at this time, I had moved to, 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 to Minnesota and was serving a church here on the north side of the church that was larger than sanctuary at the time. And I remember sitting in a meeting with Pastor Ephraim and Pastor Kevin and them asking questions about systems and process because they had grown so fast, the church had outgrown all the systems that it had in place. God was most certainly blessing this church. And after six years of serving as the leader, God called Pastor Ephraim to the West Coast. And after an extended search, the sanctuary called the Dr. Dennis Edwards as its next senior pastor. As much as Ephraim was what sanctuary needed in beginning, Dr. Edwards was what we needed in the next season. It became, became clear under his leadership that growth in community and growth in spiritual maturity were just as important as growth numerically. And while the church did indeed grow smaller in those years, the church grew closer in those years, and we grew in many other ways, and we further rooted ourselves in North Minneapolis as we even built our first church building in this community. For years, people had asked questions, where is the sanctuary? No matter how much good work we did, people would always ask questions like, where is your church? Because we rented space in schools and, and never had a place of worship that was our own, I believe in many ways it impeded us from serving the community. But during this season, what many of us call Sanctuary 2.0, we were able to root ourselves right here on West Broadway next to the busiest intersection in this community, and God has blessed us, blessed us in season 2.0. I remember in Sanctuary Season 
I, I remember us working really hard to help this young church understand that while we were indeed new, newer and seeking to be innovative, we were a part of a faith that was old and beautiful. We were a part of something much bigger than what we were doing here. We were a part of a faith that had been handed down to us, and we were called to be good stewards of that faith. If you were around during those years, we talked a lot about being a church that was biblical, that discipleship was a part of Pastor Dennis's heart. It was who he was called to be, and we talked a lot about being a biblical church. We were a church that was committed to continually studying and practicing God's Word. We, we were committed to affirming uh, the, the covenant affirmation that uh, the Holy Scriptures, the Old and New Testament, is the Word of God and the only perfect rule for faith, doctrine, and conduct. We were a biblical church. Yes, we were doing some innovative things. Yes, we were doing some hip things. Yes, we were reaching people in some incredible ways, but we were guided at all times by God's Word. We have always been a biblical church. Not only were we a biblical church, we were a devotional church. We were committed to worshiping God with our whole lives. We, we, we wanted Jesus not just to be invited into our hearts, but we wanted Jesus to be Lord over our entire life, our mouths, our minds, our hands, our feet, and even our wallet. We were saying, Lord, you are Lord of our lives, all of it, not just on Sunday, not just in worship, but Jesus, you are Lord of our entire life. That is what it is to be a part of this church, to be biblical and devotional, committed to God's Word, and also worshiping God with our entire lives. A biblical church, a devotional church, and a connectional church. If you've been around Sanctuary for more than a few weeks, you know that we are constantly moving people towards our life group ministry, constantly inviting people into relationships with others across racial and economic and, and gender lines, across any other potential barriers, because we know we were never meant to live this life in isolation. We were a connectional church, always pointing each other. Long before you think you need it, we're saying to you, circles are better than rows. Get connected to somebody. Build relationships. Pray together. Study together. And 2020 has shown us that we need each other. We are a biblical church. We are a devotional church. And yes, we are a connectional church because we cultivate loving relationships across any barrier that may separate us. But not only that, friends, we've also worked hard to become a missional church, a church that helps to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in both word and in deeds of compassion, mercy, and justice. We believe that our work is joining with God in sharing the good news of Jesus in the world. Wherever there is need, we want to be there in the name of Jesus. Wherever there is, is a loss of hope, we want to be there offering hope in the name of Jesus. Wherever there is darkness, we want to be there bringing the light of Jesus. And wherever there is even death, we want to be there because we are resurrection people. That's what it means for us to be a missional church. Sanctuary, we are biblical, we are devotional, we are connectional, and we are missional. And for 18 years, we have been intentional as a church in not doing church as usual. We don't simply want to exist to be a church like every other church. We are following God into the world, and we are celebrating that God has been faithful to us for 18 years, and we are celebrating that God will be faithful in the years to come, friends. That's what we're celebrating today. That's what we're honoring today. And as we consider this God who has been faithful to us over these first 18 years, and as we consider how God might be calling us to live out our faith in the years to come, I, I want to encourage us today with our theme for this year. Our, our theme for this year is the power of us, ordinary people, extraordinary mission. The power of us, 
ordinary people, extraordinary mission. That theme comes and is rooted in Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. I want us to look at it again, and I hope that this word soaks down into your spirit, that it becomes a life verse for you this year as we consider what does it mean to be ordinary people called to an extraordinary mission. Luke chapter 10, verse 1 and 2 says this, After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest then to send out workers into his harvest field. Friends, this this last year has been a hard year. 2020 itself was, it could very well be called the year of a lot. There was just a lot going on. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing could have prepared us for what this past year has been or how we would be different because of this past year. And this past year, while it has indeed been a time of great grief and pain and loss, this last year has also been deeply clarifying for many of us. 2020 reminded us that when your back is against the wall, when, when you don't know how much you have left in the tank, a, a lot of the peripheral things they begin to fade away, and your core identity, the things that matter most to you, begin to rise to the surface. And this is significant for us as a church, a super diverse church, because while no one loves struggle, I believe we should celebrate the reality that struggle helps to remind us of who we are at our core. And as we begin this new year together, This year of 2021, the struggles we've had over this last year remind us that at our core, we are a Christ-centered biblical church. We we are a black-led, black-centered, multi-ethnic church. We are an urban church with an intentional, missional focus here in North Minneapolis. We are an equipping church a church where our staff are not simply doers. We're not professionals that allow you to become the consumer as the congregation, but we are equipping leaders. We, we are equipping you, the congregation, to live out your faith in tangible ways in this church, but also in the world. And we live out our mission together, our vision together, our values together, and we grow together in deeper fellowship with God and one another. In fact, I would go even farther and say we can only live out our mission, our vision, and our values as we grow in deeper relationship with one another. And so, because that is true, we've chosen a theme for this year, the power of us the power of us. We are, at sanctuary, ordinary people who have been called to an extraordinary mission. We are ordinary people called to an extraordinary mission. Our focus this year is simply on missional discipleship. It is a reminder that we have been called by God, that we have been saved by God, that we are being transformed by God, and we are being sent out into the world for the sake of mission. Think about who we are. Maybe you're new here, and you're still trying to get a sense of who we are as a church. Or maybe you've been around so long, you're simply used to us, and and, and you can't really make sense of who we are anymore. I want to offer a few suggestions of who we are, a few observations, actually, of who we are. Who is sanctuary? We are ordinary people called together by God. That's, That's who we are. We are simply 
ordinary people who have been called together by God. We are women and we are men. We are young folks and we are some seasoned saints in the building as well. We are single folks and we are married folks. Our, our community is made up of folks who, who have been praying for a long time that they would somehow be blessed to become parents. And our community is made up of folks who are still wondering, Lord, why would you ever trust me so much to, to allow me to raise a whole nother human being? We, we are made up of all kinds of folks because it takes all kind of people to do what God has called us together to do. But the reality is, the thing we know for sure is that despite our diversity, God has called us together. God has called us together in this place at this time. Pastor Ephraim didn't call us together. Pastor Dennis didn't call us together. And I certainly didn't call this strange group of people together. It was only God who would have the vision to call us together. And we have been called together to know one another and be known by one another, to love one another and be loved by one another, to offer grace and to receive grace, to share in one of each other's joys and to bear one another's burdens. We are here together, sanctuary, because we have been called together by God. And we're ordinary people. You don't have to be a superstar to be at home here at Sanctuary. You don't need a following, and you don't need to be a social media influencer to, to fit in here or to be somebody here. Our life together is defined not by our perfection or not by our celebrity or not by our expertise, not by anything beyond the love that we have for God and the love that God has for us. That's what pulls us together. That's what holds us together. It is the love of God and the love for one another that pulls us together and keeps us together. We have been called together by God. And as we are called together, and as we are taught to live together, God is at the very same time preparing us and sending us out. Not only have we been called together by God, we are now being sent out by God as well. We are being instructed to follow Jesus into the world. We, we are being instructed to, to live out our faith in the world in such a way that others would want to know who Jesus is. We've been called to something extraordinary. And if you say yes to being a part of the sanctuary, you are every year and every month and every week and every day and even every hour. And from situation to situation, you are saying yes to the invitation to what God wants to do in us and through us. What we need at sanctuary is folks who will simply say yes to God's invitation. And here's, here's, here's the kicker. Here's the thing that makes most of us uncomfortable. God has a habit of sending us out even while God is still forming us. God sends us out even while God is forming us. God doesn't wait until we get it all together. God doesn't wait until we finish the degree. He doesn't wait till all our subjects and our verbs line up. He doesn't wait till the credit score gets to, the way, to where we want it. God sends us out even as God is still working on us. Friends, long before you ever feel ready, even while God is still working stuff out in your heart and your mind, God is inviting you to do the work of ministry not merely in the church, not merely in youth ministry and, and children's ministry, not, not merely in life groups, but God also calls us to do the work of ministry in the neighborhood, on our streets and in our cul-de-sacs, in corporate America, in that boardroom, in the classroom, on the city bus, in the laundromat, wherever you find yourself, God sends us out to do the work of ministry sanctuary and my prayer for us 
My prayer is that I will see more and more of you across demographics, regardless of your age, regardless of what you've done in your past, regardless of your failures in the past. My hope is that more and more of you would catch this vision of living lives of missional significance. We are ordinary people living extraordinary lives, taking part in an extraordinary mission that on our own we could not attain. But together, together is this strange group of people that God has brought together. We are able to do something together that we could never do on our own. And so I continue to pray. I pray for our church daily. I I pray knowing that as we grow in warmth and in relationship with one another, as we learn to connect and and, and truly be present with one another, as we immerse ourselves in the study and the living out of God's Word, as we grow in all those traditional spiritual practices, as we learn to trust God and carry God out in the world and live out our faith wherever we find ourselves day to day, I know that we are changed and the world is being changed along with us. And here's the thing, Sanctuary, the world needs a church like Sanctuary as much today as it ever has. The world needs a church like Sanctuary today as much as it ever has. We, we need what Sanctuary has to offer. You see, we've seen, we've seen over and over again, we see it even in the news today, what happens when people organize around evil and around various forms of supremacy. We, we've seen what that looks like. We've seen that play out all throughout history But the world needs to see what it looks like and what happens when a multi-ethnic community of Christ followers organize around the love of God. The world needs to see what it looks like when this mixed group of people come together and organize around the saving grace of Jesus. The world needs to see what it looks like when we go out into the world fueled by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we do that, and only when we do that, then we'll see people healed. Then we'll see justice roll down like like water and righteousness like a mighty flood. Then we see freedom for the prisoner and sight for the blind. Then we see the oppressed set free. Then we see communities that are transformed. Only when we, communities like this, say yes to God's calling, does change happen. And so, Sanctuary, today and this year, I'm inviting us to say yes to this call to be ordinary people on an extraordinary mission. My hope is that you'll say yes, not simply because I'm inviting you to, not simply because Pastor Dennis meant something to you and he invited you to, not because the, the, the myth of, of Pastor Ephraim is so large that you're excited about it and he invited you to. I pray that you'll say yes to this call because God has called you. We are an extraordinary people and we are called to an extraordinary mission. And if we will do our part, God has proven himself time and time again to do his part. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much for what you are calling us to, for what you have set before us, for what we've seen you do, Lord, over 18 long years. God, I thank you for the faithfulness of that first group of folks who said yes to your invitation to create what has become the Sanctuary Covenant Church. And God, I thank you for the struggles that they endured on our behalf and for the things that they sacrificed so that we might be where we are today. And God, I thank you for what you've done over the years, for all the folks who have come and gone, for the good times and the hard times, God, for all the things that we've seen you do, we say thank you. And now, Lord, as we stand at the beginning of this new year, I pray that you would bless this church that we would see your goodness in ways, God, that would far exceed anything that we might imagine. 
think or even ask for. God, you know that the enemy would want nothing more than to tear down what you've built up. God, you know the enemy would want to use anything that he could get a foothold in to break up what you've created here, God. And I pray that you would guard this church, that you would protect this church, that we would not be given over to the hand of the enemy, but that we would trust in you and follow you and that you would fight on our behalf. Lord, renew the strength of all those who remain, those who are saying yes and yes again to your invitation. God, I pray for that brother or sister today who is tired or struggling and weak. God, I pray that you would give them the strength to go on. God, help us to rise to the occasion that you've set before us. We love you, Father, and we're so grateful that you first loved us. It's in the perfect name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Just in case you wanted another taste, we're we'll singing one more time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Sanctuary does. And we're gonna go to the left. One, two.